Hey guys, it's Tim Starnes from CineSamples. In the previous video, I listed key frequency ranges for a variety of percussion instruments and used corrective EQ to balance them within a mix. In this tutorial, I focus on brass. For convenience, here's a list of the previous tutorials. And as a reminder, in this video, I'm focusing on corrective EQ within one particular mixing situation, MIDI production using sample libraries in the orchestral and film score genre. Let's return to the session I used for percussion and listen to the stem playback with nothing added except the EQ I set for the percussion in the previous video. Otherwise, no EQ, no dynamics, and no reverb added. Purely stem playback. Now listening to the brass section only. I recommend grouping the brass together to make it easier to solo the brass section. These brass stems courtesy of Cinebrass Core and Pro. Now let's explore some key frequency ranges for each brass stem starting with the horns. Horns have a really wide pitch range. In this range, there's not much below 200, so raising 2 to 300 gets the fundamental and makes it warmer, but can also make it muddy. If the horns were playing two octaves lower, adding 2 to 300 will give you a boxy sound. Now moving up beyond 300 into 4, 5, and 6 gets that boxy sound for this pitch range. Yet it's also the range that defines the horn sound, so too little of it is just as bad. And then as we approach 1K, Now we're starting to get a bit more definition. And as we approach 2K, now we're starting to get more of a, a pinched tone. Starting to get into the brassy area. 4K, now we're starting to get the edge in there between four and five. And then above 7K, you get that really pleasant bell almost angel dust for the horn. But you can also get that by reducing frequencies below that. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna play it again and go through these same frequency ranges and decrease them to hear what that sounds like. Again, the fundamental. So it's lost some body. All right, we're gonna move on up into four to five between five and six, that's a very key area. That's what defines a horn, right in there. It helps clear up some mid-range, but it also reduces the definition or that typical horn sound. Now I'm trying to find a very particular frequency range for the horn. Now, if I'm reducing somewhere around 3K, that gives the impression that I'm pushing the horns all the way back to the, to the back of the room. Um, it's already mixed that way, so I'm not gonna add this to this particular stem, but that does help if you're recording uh, horns or if you've got other sample stems that need that kind of help. It also exposes that light edge or angel dust for the horns above 7K, something I talked about in my first EQ tutorial video. Okay, moving on. Trumpets. Trumpets on this particular piece are in the in their higher range, of course. Uh, if we were to have a lower range, we would find the, uh, the fundamental somewhere around 300, but not in this case. Fundamental here is somewhere in the 500 range. Okay, great, that warms it up. It brings it closer to us. There's 1K, that doesn't sound too pleasant for orchestral trumpets, gives a nasally tone. 2K, getting pinched right in here. This is a very typical pinched area for trumpet, right between 2.8 and 3.2 in here. 
So notice if I lower that range, it has a softer, more pleasant sound, if you want it. Doesn't apply for everything, though. Going above that, yeah, you get your air and your edge up there, and that can also be very irritating, so be careful for that. All right, moving on to the trombones. Trombones, essentially low brass. Okay, this is pretty full range, fundamental way below 100. I mean, I bet I can find some stuff down here around 40 if I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's where the string basses need to live, not the, not the brass. So, moving on up to around 100. Between 100, 150, somewhere in here, that's our proximity effect, like I showed you in the previous video. Gonna bring it closer to us, also gonna make it muddy, so be careful for that. Moving on up between two and three, we get in some boxy sound, you know, lower mid-range muddiness. And then round five. Yeah, that's a kind of a boxy sound. Now that's the same range as what defines the horn as a horn. And I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Moving on up toward a thousand. Again, very unpleasant sound as it was for the trumpets. 2K, pinched. That's where we're getting into that territory. Now for this low brass, between three and four, gives us some nice definition, okay? That 3.6 is a very nice definition range for the low brass. All right, going on above that. And around five to six is where you're gonna get your air. But it, it can also get excessive, and that can get really papery thin, like right up in there, so be careful for that as well especially on close mic stuff. As I've said before, I often recommend listening to a reference mix. Here's one from Avatar. It's a bit older, but similar in nature to our mix. Our brass appears fairly close in terms of EQ, but it could use some adjustment to prevent frequency buildup within the brass section. This is another good reason to check EQ within the section and within the entire mix. Separately, a stem might sound fine, but when combined with others, it might contribute to an excess of energy in a certain frequency range. In this example, the horns and the trombones each sound fine separately, but both stems have a lot of energy in the mid-range. So when played together, they create a slight excess and buildup of mid-range energy. The frequency I'm hearing is around 580 hertz. If I try to reduce 580 in the horns, I'm compromising a very defining frequency for the horn. So instead, I'll reduce that frequency in the trombones. After I combine them in their section and in the full mix, I find that I've created some space in the mid-range. Also, each brass stem has its own place in the frequency spectrum without conflict with others.
Conversely, the trumpet stem sounds a bit pinched in the 2.8 kHz area when soloed. However, in the mix, it sounds fine because it's not orchestrated to stand out over the rest of the mix. So in this case, I would probably leave it. I hope this has helped some of you understand the possibilities of shaping your MIDI stems to create a better mix. Again, I'm only focusing on corrective EQ in these videos. There are other solutions that I hope to show you in the future. So look out for the next Corrective EQ videos for other instrument groups, including winds and strings.